Fights Art again from few texts later. So we're in the middle of 2022. I can still say it is a very exciting year for those who are trying to get into smart home or home automation. Aside from all the new devices that you can choose from, there's a new standard supposedly rolling out this year, and that is Matter. Well, that didn't happen as of making this video. It's been rescheduled multiple times already, so I don't know what's the delay all about. Well, that didn't matter for now since it is not implemented yet. But today we will talk about how you can start your very own smart home if you haven't done it yet or expand if you already have some smart home devices at your disposal. Starting a smart home has been easier than ever but sometimes kinda overwhelming. And I will break down all the things you need to know to start. Having a smart home myself for over 3 years and continuously building it gives me most of the knowledge I need to make it enjoyable. And if you're into smart home and tech, consider subscribing. This is actually what this channel is all about. Now having a good network is necessary to any smart home. Wi-Fi speed is crucial and if not the most important thing that you should first establish. If you're just starting out, relying on your ISP provided router will get you by just fine. Having a couple light bulbs and speakers is perfect. When I say a couple, about 3 light bulbs and maybe 1 or 2 speakers max. The reason is because most routers provided by ISP are really not built for IoT devices. You may run into some issues along the way especially if you decided to expand the number of devices. Let's not forget the fact that you have other devices that are most likely already connected to your home network like mobile phones, tablets, etc. Choosing the right platform will not just save you money and time, but you can maximize whatever platform you choose beforehand. Yes, you can save money and time when you started with the right platform. If you have, for example, Apple devices such as Apple Watch, an iPhone, maybe an iPad as well, going for a home kit setup is the best option for you. Controlling your home devices from any of your Apple devices is just a no-brainer. But if you have an Android phone, you have the ability to choose either Amazon A platform or the Google Assistant. If you want to know more about the differences and similarities of these smart assistants, we are actually planning to make a separate video about it, so stay tuned for that. Security is one of the most overlooked features of a smart home. Most of us thought when smart automation was mentioned is turning on lights through voice, but security is one of the factors that you may want to consider before investing so much like get an outdoor or indoor cameras, video doorbells, and even smart door locks. Anyway, it's pretty affordable nowadays with a ton of options out there. But if you can just stick with the supported platform you choose earlier, that makes more sense to easily access those cameras to any displays that you may already have. Some cameras and locks don't work with all three assistants, so do your research before getting one. Well, it should be reliable as well since your family and your home security is at stake in here. Now comes the best part, smart lighting. This is what really makes any home smart. It may be the easiest. Not only smart light bulbs are dirt cheap, and installing them is just easy. Anyone can literally install with no issues, with zero risk at all turning them on and off through an app or voice, setting routines where they turn on and off automatically by themselves is just amazing. Not just that, asking your assistant to change the color to anything you can think of, I think is the coolest part. Well, there's a ton as well you can choose from, from light bulbs, light strips, panel lights, smart switches, 
Only thing you need to bear in mind is that light switches can only turn on and off a light and it requires knowledge on how to replace an old light switch. What I personally suggest is to hire a certified electrician if you never swap any light switch before. Entertainment is next. This is one of the easiest to start with as well. But you have to bear in mind with home networking that you already established and the assistant or platform of your choice. Since not all streaming services and media players work in one roof, like for example the Apple TV. It only works with Siri or HomeKit, Fire TV Sticks for Alexa, and Android TV Box or Chromecast with Google TV are for Google Assistant. The reason why I mention networking is because watching TV series or maybe movies through any streaming platforms eats up a ton of bandwidth on your internet service, especially if you're watching 4K videos. So to avoid any headache, it's better to invest in a better home network setup. On top of that, you may prefer playing music with either one speaker or more if you have one for a whole home audio experience. And again, there's a ton of options out there from displays and speakers with all sorts of shapes and sizes. Automation is another thing you may want to look into, especially if you hate giving voice command to control your home. Automation is the way to go. Making things happen automatically if an action is triggered, whether it's with the use of sensors or it could be a time-based routine. We are planning to make a separate video as well on how automation works and what routines we have implemented in our home. But the idea here is, there should be some kind of trigger to start the automation and set the following end result for your devices. Either the devices are on or off or set a different color for smart lighting for example. Or you can create an end result but aside from devices, it could be announcements, reminders, alarms. All platforms have their own option to set automations and routines. But when I found out giving you more flexibility is with Apple's HomeKit. Last are the other miscellaneous smart devices like robot vacuums, smart water kettle, smart blinds, curtain motors, smart fans, etc which makes our home almost complete. In a sense, you can get so creative with what you are trying to accomplish and see if those devices are worth picking up depending on the type of lifestyle you have and your family got. Besides everything you're trying to build is either to make things easier for you, maybe improve your security, or just simply make everything look cool and nice. These little pieces can really make an impact to the way you live your life. Just make sure whatever smart appliances you're trying to pick up should work with the platform you initially selected for your home. So those are the things you should be looking into when it comes to starting or building your smart home. I will leave some links in the description below of the products that we use in our home to give you pretty much a head start check them out so the question now is will you start this year or you will hold off for now let me know in the comment section below this is art again from Futex later thank you so much for watching and see you in our next video